you may want to use TV shows as a way to learn English. But if you're not doing it the right way, you could either become really bored because you're just learning and you're not actually enjoying the show, or you could be learning nothing because you're just enjoying the show. In this video, I am going to teach you how to strike the balance, how you can use TV shows to learn English the right way so that you can start actually using what you learn and you can pick up all kinds of different things from an episode of a TV show. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And now let's get into the video. How should you learn from TV shows? Is it enough to just sit down on the sofa, turn it on and watch? Will you learn English that way? Well, I think that can be a good way to get some stuff in the background. Let's call that method number one, the passive method. But maybe you've got subtitles on if you're watching an English show, right? And so you might be watching those subtitles a little more than you're actually listening. So you're not really improving your listening that much. And let's say that, you know, you're enjoying it. Let's say you're watching a show you like. So you're not really picking up many specific idioms or cultural references, things like that. But you are getting those background things. You're kind of experiencing the language and that's not necessarily a bad thing. You might be learning a bit about the culture, right? You might be learning some some idioms here or there if they're mentioned several times and you catch them, right? Once in a while you'll pick up a few things, maybe some speech patterns. Okay, okay. But that's, I would say, only one way to do it. Now, the other side is to go the more intense route. The intense route would be to use that episode of a show that hopefully you like as a learning episode. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this. If you do this, this is good. You pause every time you don't understand something, you write it down. You try not to use any subtitles to practice your listening skills. You write down grammar points, you write down idioms and phrases and cultural references and patterns. You write everything down and it takes you three days just to get through one episode because you're being that diligent and careful. These two represent two sides, two extremes, I think. On one side, passive, picking up maybe one or two things, but enjoying it, right? Kind of uh, soaking it in, absorbing a little bit. On the other side, very active learning, hyper-focused, very slow, not super fun. So, of course, you can't really enjoy the episode. So, I'm not saying don't do either of these, go ahead. But I would suggest that there is a hybrid of these two, which is possibly a better path, a better method, if you want to sort of have the best of both worlds. So, how? How do we do this? Number one, if you find a series that you enjoy, absolutely. If you don't enjoy it, then you're not going to keep doing it. So it has to be something that you really like that's going to pull you in and make you want to keep watching. That wanting to keep watching is essential. Okay. Now you have that. You ask yourself, instead of, I'm going to use this as my learning episode, Instead of killing the joy, say to yourself, I am going to get five or six takeaways from this episode. Five or six takeaways from each episode. Don't push it. Not every single thing, not every little idiom. If you don't understand something, skip it. It's fine. And maybe you have subtitles on, but in English, not in your language, in English. Okay. So that's a pretty good compromise. Now, eventually, you want to work toward not 
having any subtitles to be able to understand everything by listening. But okay, maybe that's a little difficult at first. Put on English subtitles, no problem, that's okay. Okay, so you tell yourself, five to six, make it seven, okay, that's fine. Five to six takeaways for each episode. And as you watch, you remind yourself once in a while, once in a while, not every two seconds, once in a while, to say there's an idiom I can learn, that's a word I can learn, that's a phrasal verb I can learn, that is a cultural reference I can learn, that is an interesting pronunciation uh, a point or pattern that I can learn. I can learn that sound, that's interesting, a speech pattern that I'm not familiar with. Okay, all of those things, idiom, idioms, vocabulary, phrasal verbs, cultural references, pronunciation points, and speech patterns, all of those things. Tell yourself five to six total, total, okay. So good, good. Every episode you watch, you're learning five or six things. That's fantastic. And you haven't killed your joy. You haven't removed the fun. You still want to watch it, okay? And I'm not telling you this in a sort of fixed way. Find your own balance, right? The key thing is you want to be getting enough out of each episode so that it's useful and you want to still be enjoying it. So that balance may be different for everybody. Next. TV shows offer something that a lot of other ways of learning or sources of things like vocabulary and grammar don't offer. And that is cultural references. You can actually learn a lot about the culture, for example, American culture, when you're watching an American TV show, that is kind of hard to learn elsewhere. You can learn it in conversations, but it's a really great way to pick up on those things that people mention when they're native speakers that you don't learn in school. It's a great way to do that, okay? So just be aware of that as you're watching, but see if you can find a way to get into the community associated with that series. This is why I would recommend watching some series or shows that have a community that are fairly well established. So for example, Rick and Morty. Maybe you like Rick and Morty. Okay, you like to watch Rick and Morty? Well, guess what? There is a, a subreddit completely dedicated to Rick and Morty. Maybe you like Seinfeld. Well, guess what? There is a subreddit dedicated to Seinfeld for a lot of popular shows. Maybe it's not even shows. Maybe it's movies. By the way, same thing. It's just longer, right? So you want to make some adjustments if it's movies. If it's a movie, I don't know, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, whatever you like, right? Is there a community associated that's sharing memes and making jokes and talking about stuff? If you can get into the community, that's a great way to interact and gain a deeper cultural understanding of this thing that you're enjoying, right? Okay, so that's good. We're learning a lot and we're learning a few things and we still enjoy it. That's fantastic. And then as you go, you're trying to push yourself a little bit, especially in terms of listening, by turning off the subtitles. No subtitles. Try to watch these episodes by listening only. And if you can do that over time and understand more and more, your overall listening ability is going to improve. Okay? Then you've kind of got a process, right? Again, you have to find that balance, but after that, rinse and repeat. Find, well, if it's a long series, keep watching that <laughs> forever, but find something similar. Get recommendations, find similar shows that you might also enjoy, and you're going to then have a whole new sort of universe of language that you can learn from, and it can go on forever. TV shows and movies can be a powerful, fantastic way to learn the English language, but you have to find the right way. And if you go too far on either extreme, you're either not getting very much at all, or you've killed all of the joy, and so you don't even want to continue because it's this huge mountain every single time you want to watch just one episode. Find that 
balance so that you can have your cake and eat it too. That's an expression. I don't know if that's in any movies, but that's the idea. And don't worry about translation. Try not to be translating stuff. Keep it all in English, all English dictionaries. Look stuff up in English. Don't translate words into your language unless you absolutely have to, okay? So find a show that works for you. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And also check out my full courses in the links in the description. Mm -hmm.